I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create rope in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you how you can draw a rope like this in Illustrator. And it's the kind of shape that you can apply to pen lines, like the word rope here, this shape that I've created here, and even these circles. So if you're ready, let's get started making rope in Illustrator. To begin drawing our rope in Illustrator, I'm going to select the rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to select a dark stroke and a lighter fill because this is going to give us an idea as to what our rope is going to look like. I'm just going to drag out a rounded rectangle onto the screen. And at this point, I can adjust the stroke around it if I wish. I'm going to select the Selection tool here and just rotate this shape because the amount of the rotation is going to control how my rope is going to look. With the shape still selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform because this allows me to create multiples of these shapes to make a block that I can later turn into my rope brush. So I'm going to select Preview and I'm going to set this to about six copies for now. And now I'm just going to increase the horizontal value here until my shapes all move away from each other and just intersect along their edge. You can see I've gone too far here, so I'm just going to back it off a little bit. I want it to look like this so that I'm seeing that the stroke around the shape is pretty much consistent all the way around. And I'll click OK. Now, if I've added too many of these shapes, it doesn't matter, but what's critical is that you have enough of them. So now we're ready to start breaking this up to make our rope shape. I'm going to zoom into my rope shape here a little bit closer, and I think actually my rounded rectangles are a little bit long, so I'm going to select this one and just shorten it. And in doing so, I'm shortening all the others so I can just determine what's going to look good for my rope shape. And now I'm going to select this shape and choose Object Expand Appearance. And I'm going to continue to do that because I want to expand both the fill and the strokes. I'm going to select that and click OK. And then I'm going to start ungrouping these shapes. I'm going to choose Object Ungroup, and I'm going to do it until Ungroup no longer appears here in the list. You can see it's grayed out now. Now let's go and have a look at the Layers palette, because what I've got here is a series of alternating paths. You can see I've got a stroke, a path for my what was my stroke, and a path for what was my fill. So I'm just going to select away from this shape, and I'm going to arrange this so that all of the outlines are together. It's just going to make life a little bit easier. So I'm just pulling these all up so that I have all my outlines together and now all of my fills together. I'm just going to turn off the fills for now because I don't need those. But we're going to focus on the outline. And now I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I want my rectangle to have no fill and no stroke. But my rectangle needs to intersect this shape. And I'm going to line it up with this drop this pointy edge in here. So I'm just going to start dragging fairly close to the top of my shape, and you'll see in a minute why you'll want to be that close. And I'm going to drag it out one or two of these shapes. I could make it just one, but let's make it two so that we get a fairly generous piece of rope to work with. And all I'm concerned about is the intersections here and that the rectangle covers the whole of my shape. So let's just zoom in here a little bit closer still and just make sure that this is nicely lined up. I have Snap To turned off. You can get to that by choosing View. And there's a Snap To here, Snap To Grid, Snap To Point. I've got all my snaps turned off. And the reason for this is it actually makes it easier to make sure that this line is in the right place if you don't have Snap To turned on, because it tends otherwise to snap to everything except what it is that it's supposed to snap to. 
So I'm just making sure that the intersection point at either end of this rectangle is exactly the same. So you can see it's a little bit over from the pointy bit, but so it too is it on the other end. It's a little bit over, so it's pretty much going to take the shape piece that I want to take out. So let's just zoom back out again. And the first thing I'm going to ascertain is if I don't need some of these squares. And you're right, I don't need some of these squares. I don't need this one on the end. So let's just go and get the ones that I don't need. I'm just going to target the selection tool by pressing the letter V. I'm going to select on this one and get rid of it and this one too. But let's just test. We may need a part of this one over here to make our shape and we may need a little part of this one here too. So I'm not going to get rid of anything else, but I'm just going to leave what I have here. I'm going to select everything except for this rectangular path. So I'm just going to grab here this shape and I'm going to shift click on each of these shapes that I want to select. So now I have selected all these outlined edges and from the Pathfinder I'm going to click Unite. You can get to Pathfinder by choosing Window Pathfinder and doing this just unites these all into a single compound path. And that's going to let me now cut the path into just the piece that I want. But I don't want to lose this rectangle either, so I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to target it alone and I'm going to press Control C to copy it and then Control Shift V and I'm going to do that a few times. You could get the same result by choosing Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place because I want a few copies of this cutting rectangle, the rectangle I'm going to use to cut my shape. But for now I'm going to turn off all the copies except this one. So I'm going to select it and select the compound path. And basically at this stage I'm working pretty much from the layers palette rather than the image itself because it's just a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So I've got this rectangular path and this compound path and I'm going to take the intersection of the two. In other words, this piece in here. So I'm going to target the intersect option here in the Pathfinder and just click it. And that leaves me with just the outline strokes, but they've lost all their stroke and fill. That's not a problem because I'm going to target its fill because this is the shape. The outline is the shape itself. I'm just going to reselect my fill color. So there is the outline of the rope. And if we wanted just plain hollow rope, we could just use this. But we want filled rope, so I'm going to turn this rope off for now. And let's bring back some of these shapes. Because what I need to do now is to cut these shapes using the path that I have. So I'm just going to bring my path down here and I'm going to target the path and the first of these shapes by shift clicking on it. And if I click intersect now, I'll get the little piece of the path that I need. Well, Illustrator is telling me that these two paths are not overlapping. So that tells me that this one that's selected here, I don't even need for my final shape. So I'm just going to discard it. Let's try these two and see if these overlap. Select both of the shapes, go to intersect. Well, yes, they did overlap and we can see the overlap area here. So now we have the shape that we want, but it doesn't have any fill. So I'm just going to go and target my fill color. That one's now been created. So I'm just going to turn it off for now so I can see a little more clearly what's going on. Here is an additional copy of this path. So I'm going to make it visible click on it, shift click on the other path, which is this piece in here, and then click intersect. And this is the element that we need. Again, I'm going to fill it and I'm going to turn it off because that has been cropped to size. 
here's another copy of our rectangular path. So I'm just going to bring it into position. I don't actually have to bring it down in the layers palette, but I thought it might be a little bit easier for you to see exactly what we're targeting. So we're going to target the rectangular path and we're going to target another one of these pieces of color. And again, we're going to the intersection. In other words, do we need this piece and how much of this piece do we need to create our rope object? Well, there's the piece that we need and we're going to recolor it. Now, my guess is I don't need anything more, but let's just test it. Here is our rectangular path and here is the next shape. And you can see that these two don't intersect. So when I click intersect, I'm just going to get an error message saying, well, these two shapes didn't intersect anyway. So I don't need any of this path at all. And I'm not going to need any of these two paths either. So I can just discard those. And I no longer need this rectangular shape, so I can get rid of any of those. I've got a couple of those. OK, everything else is hidden, so let's just bring it back. And here is our rope piece. If we make this our rope, then we're going to be able to apply that rope to any shape at all. So I'm going to just grab hold of all of these pieces, just select over all of them till they're all selected. And I'm going to open up my brushes panel by choosing Window and then Brushes. And I'm going to drag and drop this rope into the brushes panel. And I want to make this a pattern brush. So I'm going to target Pattern Brush and click OK. When you create a pattern brush, you have a few settings that you can set up. One of them is the colorization method. If we choose none, this rope is never going to be any color other than these browns. But if we want to be able to color it, so for example, greens or yellows, then we'll choose tints and shades. I now have to determine how it's going to be bent around inside and outside corners. Right now, it's not going to handle an inside corner. And the way it handles an outside corner, I don't think is particularly attractive. So let's look at the outside corner first. And let's go and see if we can find a better option here. And I think Auto Between or Auto Centered are probably going to be better options. Auto Between, probably the better of the two. But you can determine for yourself which one you want to use. And let's go for the inner corner tile. And again, this time, let's go for Auto Between. And then I can just click OK, and that is my brush. Now that I've created my brush, I could just delete these pieces, or I could just put it aside just in case I need it again. So being a little bit prudent, I'm just going to put mine aside. And now let's create a shape. So I'm going to create a circle to test this rope on. So I'm going to target the ellipse tool, and I'm just going to drag out a circle. I'm holding the Shift key down so that the ellipse is constrained to a circle. It has no fill and no stroke, and we want to stroke it with our brush. So I'm going to target the stroke here, and then I'm going to click on the very last brush in the Brushes palette, because that's the one that I just created, this one here. And this is applying the brush to the shape. Now, it's sort of OK, but it looks pretty big to me. Well, we can change that. With the shape still selected, I'm going to click here for the options of selected object. That allows me to change this brush for just this instance of that brush. And what I want to do is to make it smaller. So I've preview turned on here. So now I can adjust my brush shape to the amount of curve, an amount of ropey looking brush that I want. So if I want to suggest a quite small patterned rope, I could bring it down to 5% or less. But I could make it thicker and heavier if I want to. And then click OK. And because we have this set to tints and shades, if I change this color here, then we're going to change the tint and the shade of the brush. So whatever color I have selected here for my stroke color, that's going to be the color of my rope. So you may find that tints and shades is a good option for being able to reshade this brush without having to actually go and recreate it for a different color rope. 
This brush can be applied to square shapes, it can be applied to lines, it can be applied to anything. When you apply it, if you want to make changes to it, just be aware that you'll need to make sure that your shape is targeted and that you click on this icon here, the options of selected object, which allows you to target and just change this brush for this particular instance of it. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video tutorial. Look out for more of my tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.